kutizama Fabricio Ndoa na akaenda kusukumiza mpira ule kwenye kamba alikuwa akifanya nini Omar Gonzalez Mbere ya Victor Simen pasi safi kwa Edmola Lukman amemalizia vizuri ukamshinda Fabricio Ndoa ilikuwa ni nafasi nzuri ambayo aliipata timu ya taifa ya Nigeria Victor Simen Yes, hello and welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. That was at Super Eagles uh, game against uh, the indomitable Lions of Cameroon during the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations in Cote d'Ivoire where Nigeria got to the final and uh, we lost to the host nation Cote d'Ivoire 2-1 uh, in the finals uh, to win uh, the silver uh, the, just, uh, con the last uh, edition of the Men's and Nations Cup in Cote d'Ivoire. We will also be talking about the Super, uh, Super Ego story on the show this morning uh, where we know that they are preparing for the uh, two games against Bafana Bafana of South Africa and the Cheetahs of Benin Republic uh, for the 2026 FIFA World Cup. We will be looking at that and some couple of other stories on the show this morning. But let's uh, begin from uh, the Sports Ministry. Uh, where it has been confirmed that uh, Team Nigeria uh, will begin their begins campaign on June 2nd uh, that, uh, for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Uh, Team Nigeria to begin campaign, uh, begins campaign June 2nd. Uh, that is coming in from the Federal Minister of Youth uh, and, and Sports Development, uh, from the Minister of uh, Sports Development. The youth is no longer there, so it's not a separate uh, ministry. So uh, for Team Nigeria, you know, we've had, we've had teams that qualified for the Paris uh, Olympic Games. Now, uh, three uh, uh, venues, three states will be used for the campaign. Uh, FCT, Lagos, and uh, Baesa will be venue for this campaign and a couple of other um, uh, places that could be used for mini camping. But uh, uh, June 2nd, uh, camp will open for all of uh, the teams that will be going for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. So good one that uh, we are having a definite date uh, that the campaign will begin for Team Nigeria. Uh, you know, uh, as you can see on the screen, we have our basketball, the Tigress team going, we have Super Falcons, we have uh, individual uh, uh, athletics, individual sports, uh, we have uh, badminton, Anulu uh, Akwokbayori has qualified. We also have, uh, uh, we have the likes of uh, Toby Express uh, in the 100 meters hurdles. We have our relay teams, uh, athletics are also going there. We have our wrestlers, six wrestlers, five females and one male uh, that will be going. We also have a uh, weight lifting. We have a couple of other individual sports that Nigeria will be showcasing at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. So for Team Nigeria, campaign begins on the 2nd of June. Uh, and uh, we, it's, uh, I think it is the way forward. Just on Thursday, the minister had a meeting uh, with uh, federation presidents and their secretaries and then the NOC just to put modalities, logist, all logistics in place to see how we can have a better outing at the Paris Games. I don't know if Isaac Omidiji is ready to join up on the show uh, this uh, morning. Okay, I was also expecting Samuel Amedu to join up on the show this morning. Okay, uh, for the Paris Games, we believe and we hope that Nigeria will surpass that uh, um, the, 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 the performance of Atlanta 1996 and that is what the minister is also saying that he is charging Team Nigeria at least to do more than what we saw at the Atlanta 1996. I believe the team is the Team Nigeria they are ready to do the nation proud uh, at the Olympic Games. Let's not forget that our national anthem has been changed. So we are going to be seeing a new national uh, singing a new national anthem when hostility starts, eventually if Nigeria wins a gold medal uh, at the Paris Games, when our flag will be up, you'll be hearing the new uh, national anthem, Nigeria we hear thee. All right, let's uh, leave that story and go straight to a do state and talk about the Super Six. That is the Nigeria Movement's Football League Super Six, where a uh, do queens were champions for the very first time. And as it stands right now, the governor of that state is on cloud nine, and uh, Governor Obaseki splashed 42.5 million naira 
on a Dukwins for NWF title. Wow, massive world. The players, the staff, and everybody, they are smiling home, smiling to the bank with some cool cash in their account. 42.5 million era given out to these guests for actually winning uh, the Super Six, that is 2023-2024 league season for the Nigerian Women's Football League at uh, Queens, and this is the first time they will be winning this particular uh, um, particular league for the women in Nigeria. And this is their first ever title since the inception of Nigerian Women's League. The league started in 1991. So if you look up from 1991, how old is the league? And this is the first time a uh, Queens will be lifting the title under Moses uh, uh, Aduku, who is the uh, who is the coach of the Niger uh, of the uh, Bini Asnas uh, girls, as they are called. They are the Bini Asnas. The same thing is the same name they give to the men's team, the Bini, As the Edo Asnas. So for uh, the girls uh, from Bini Edo Queens, congratulations to them and congratulations to all of the staff, the coach, the crew member, and everybody who is uh, all right. We have uh, uh, Isaac Omidiji uh, joining us on the show this morning. Uh, Isaac, uh, good morning and welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. Good morning, Manuel. Uh, thank you for having me again. All right. Uh, we started with uh, Team Nigeria, where uh, coming in from the uh, sports ministry, that Team Nigeria will begin camp on the 2nd of June. Uh, do you think um, the, the question is, is it, uh, are we late to start the camp or is too early? The uh, uh, Paris 2024 Olympic Games kickstarts by next, uh, that is by July. But is it that uh, we must have started camping before now or at least a second of June is still okay, maybe from your own perspective? Well, uh, it's not too okay. I just hope that the various federations on their own part have started camping or started what come of training individually or separately before this uh, announced joint uh, training or camping for the Olympics. That is just barely like uh, less than six weeks to the Olympics. Uh, and I know funds might be the reason why this has been uh, allowed to happen. And that we need to invest more. We need to allow the right things to happen. And for us to get the right thing to happen, we have to prepare our athletes. I know some of those who are based uh, abroad, uh, outside the shores of the country, are already training. They are on, you know, in high spirit, attending various uh, meets, attending various competitions, exposing themselves to play, uh, play various athletes who are world class as well, so that when they go to the Olympics, it will not be a problem. So let's give it to the sport ministry. Let's give them a chance. Let's hope that this second uh, June will be second June and it will not be postponed again. And let us hope that the right things will be done within this period. I hope that when I mean the right things, the athletes will not be hold their camp allowances. Uh, they'll be well taken care of in terms of feeding and every other thing. But for the uh, athletes, I know they are ready to do Nigeria proud. A lot of records have been set in various meets and competitions. Uh, before this time, let's hope that that will also translate into the Olympics proper. Olympics is very huge, very big, and the competition is very stiff. Okay, Olympic is huge, the competition is very stiff. We also have uh, Samuel Amedu joining us on the show this morning. Samuel, welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. Uh, that's uh, the FCT Swan Secretary General. Uh, you are welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. We are looking at uh, Team Nigerian campaign to uh, start on the 2nd of June, that is coming in from the ministry. And, you know, uh, we've, had, we've had our individual athletes, team sports, going to the Paris Olympic Games. Um, like you heard, Isaac Omidiji competition is stiff. But 2nd of June, from your own point of view, uh, do you think we would have uh, begun camping before now, or maybe probably, you know, the fire brigade approach uh, with Nigeria? Well, Emmanuel, thanks for having me. I think uh, we definitely need to have uh, all our plans set out. I think when we feel we want to change the narratives, uh, I do better off than we've had our best outings in the past. I think it's uh, important we get our, our schedules right. I think we have quite a number of sports that are still 
very much in competitive modes and uh, uh, we have preparation windows for individual and team athletes so i think it's important that uh, the, the ministry and also the federation probably uh, drawing from the meeting they had yesterday. I think definitely there must be clarity in how they set out to achieve uh, their, their, their competitive uh, campaign at the, at the Olympics. And I think uh, definitely programs must have, must have been shared. Some of these things uh, probably a lot has to do with how uh, the schedules have been made and also how these federations too are already thinking and planning because if you want to really uh, make podium success uh, surely you must have uh, your plans well uh, well set out so i think it's it's a key conversation that uh, the federation should be having and uh, a situation where we are we are all s s uh, clamoring for for uh, for more funding and also raising eyebrows, uh, paucity of funds. I think it definitely would always talk down uh, matters relating to quality preparation. But realistically, I think uh, beyond just the funding, beyond just uh, the, the, the state of mind of the athletes, I think a lot has to do with uh, what, what are the various competitions they could prepare that could prepare the athletes uh, very much well for the for the Olympics. And I think uh, putting athletes in competitive events that are probably close to the Olympics are probably a very very good way, even barring uh, concerns of injury. Competing before Olympics, having events, kind of a friendly tournaments, you know, a very good opportunity for athletes to really uh, to play. You could see like uh, the, the the football part. You see, uh, the women's are going to be uh, involved in the Euros uh, Euros uh, qualifiers. This is just uh, almost a month to almost a month or the same month. Uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the Olympic tournament, definitely that would be a massive advantage for uh, the European-based teams, uh, national teams going to the Olympics. So, you know, being in a competitive, whether individual or team, uh, team, team sports, I think definitely will be key. And ensuring that those competitions are competitions two months, one month to the, to the, to the events. You won't be much rusty, you won't be uh, fitness uh, low, and I think so many factors come to play. No matter what you've been doing in the past, uh, when, you, when you seem not in a competitive mood, competition going to a tournament or going to a championship like Olympics, surely you always have challenges and definitely getting into the mood will always be tough so but except for those who have been attending the olympics uh times without number so but for for probably athletes who are probably going for the first time in some right. sports uh this this definitely will be uh, a strong a strong appeal so i think it's important we we have our plan set out and that's why i was more glad that we had the african games uh this year for me it was quite a very close one to the olympics and surely uh, gave us a lot of uh, uh reasons to smile so i think it's it's important that we at least we look at uh the, the regime of these athletes uh, what's their mood like how mentally ready are they for this uh, major championship and the motivation definitely will be another conversation yes the motivation is key motivation in any walks of life is, is key since so staying with you somewhere let's go straight to a do stage you were there in Baesa in Igua, as the media officer in the night for the nigerian women's uh, football league um now a do state has uh, the Edo State Governor, Governor Basaki, splashed for 2.5 million era on Edo Queens for winning the title for the very first time. Now, all of these uh, and the league body, uh, at least uh, the fight as in lifting the title, they were given 10 million era, and that is a far cry from what we see with the MPFL. So far, so good. 42.5 million era is not a bad money at all for these girls. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's it's been a great year for Edo Queens. Uh, I think the we 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 never saw it coming realistically. Uh, understanding uh, the strength that yes, they competed at the at the Shiro's Cup in Abuja. They won uh, without even losing a game. They also uh, hosted uh, the Best of Baseki uh, Women's Cup uh, tournaments in Benin. They also won that. And uh, coming into the the, the the championship, you know, from the league season, uh, they they were not a side that was highly rated, even though they qualified to the Super Six, but they were practically one of the, the second best in their group behind Rivers Angels. And uh, realistically, you come to such tournaments, well, regardless of how your season went, uh, the Super Six is a different a campaign on its own and has its own different life. So uh, you could see teams that were really less fancied coming all out to really 
show great competition and at least uh we're very enterprising teams like heartland queens you know uh putting a surprise against some of the major contenders some of the former title winners and bias queens and rivers angels and for me it's just speaks only about how competitive the season was for edo queens who had nicked the title just uh by very narrow one points you know speaks only about how competitive the season went for them and also how much they wanted to win it and i think it's a historic one for them uh the first in 29 years for for Edo states competing in women's football and i think it's also uh they, they, they also become the, the fourth different team to have won uh in consecutive seasons uh in the nigeria women's football league and i think as much as uh, we are not so excited about the the size of of the prize money we believe yeah. definitely these are uh, a lot of endearing factors Okay, uh, we lost uh, uh, Samuel there. If you, are, if you can join us back, uh, you, you heard it all. Uh, uh, Governor Basaki giving those ladies uh, 42.5 million Naira as the champions of the Nigerian Women's Football League. Uh, Izzy, quickly, just uh, one in, in, two, in three seconds, uh, do you have anything to chip in about it? Okay, we'll, uh, Isaac will get back to us and Samuel himself. Uh, Governor Basaki giving those guys 42.5 million era uh, for winning the NWF title. He heard it from Samuel. They became the fourth team, a uh, different fourth team of winning the Women's League. The league started in 1991. All right, let's uh, move away from that story. If they join us back, uh, we will we'll still have them. Let's go straight. You saw the Super Eagles video, uh, that game against Cameroon at the African Cup of Nations. Now, uh, it is the 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifiers, and uh, the NFF says the camp for that game uh, for the qualifiers against Bafana Bafana of South Africa on June 7 at the Gosfield Akwabio International Stadium, Muyo. Uh, the camp will open on Monday, and players will start arriving camp on Monday uh, for this uh, match against uh, the Bafana Bafana of uh, South Africa. We have against South Africa and then Benin Republic. The game against Benin Republic will be played away so uh it, it's good uh, the camp will come up on on monday and that game will be on june 7 at the gospel aquabio international stadium and nigeria the super eagles they know what is at stake they have to win this game if they really want to play at the 2026 fifa world cup that will be hosted by three countries mexico canada and the united states of america these three countries will be hosting the World Cup in 2026. So for the qualifiers, we have two points in our group and we need to win these two games at least to make a statement that we are ready to play at the 2026 FIFA World Cup. The last World Cup in Qatar, Nigeria didn't uh, go. All right, let, let, let's uh, go over to this next story. And we'll look at this uh, for Rivers Hoopers. Uh, they will be playing the third place game um, today, today precisely in Kigali, that is Rwanda, the BK Arena in Rwanda, uh, River Super Coach, that is Ogo or Daudu, target third place finish. So, uh, four River Supers, they lost their game against U.S. Uh, uh, Monastery of Tunisia, in the uh, against uh, Al Ali of uh, Libya, I beg your pardon, uh, in the third place, uh, in the semi final game of the Basketball League Africa 2024. And now, uh, they have the chance at least to put to redeem themselves by uh, winning the bronze medal game in this uh, particular competition. Uh, for River Supers, they became the first uh, team, uh, first uh, Nigerian uh, basketball team to get to the semi final of the Basketball League Africa. Massive one. They actually did some recruitment, the likes of Ulissema, uh, Perry. We have uh, Kevin uh, Amayo who joined the team. And it definitely, the recruitment, Divine AK, uh, all of this recruitment paid off for River Supers, and the, they made their way to the semi-final. Though uh, they just lost by six uh, by six points. The game ended 89-83 in, uh, in that uh, semi-final game against Al Ali of uh, Libya, and now they will be playing the third place game later on today. So let's see what will happen uh, if definitely uh, Ogo Daudu will win the third place game. Let's uh, quickly just uh, look at this highlight of that game. Let's just take few part of that highlight against the uh, U.S. Uh, monastery uh, in the third place. And if we have that, definitely we can just uh, uh, see some 
uh, some action of that game. All right, yes, uh, that is the game between Al Ali and uh, of Libya and River Supers of Nigeria. All right, all right. Uh, before we go on the show, let's quickly run over some transfer stories that uh, will be in Europe. Uh, let's start uh, with this one. Uh, where are the Pro League um, clubs are keen on uh, Liverpool duo of Luis Diaz, Joe Gomez. These two players uh, uh, right now, Saudi Pro League clubs, uh, about uh, two, three of them, the likes of Anna Sanko, are in line to sign these two players from uh, Liverpool. And if everything goes as planned, uh, these two players might just be playing in the uh, uh, Saudi League come next season. All right, let's go to Tottenham Hotspur, where uh, Tottenham Hotspur is ready to listen to offers for Richard Lissin and Emma Senior uh, Royal. These two players are of Brazil. They play for Brazil national team. And now the two of them, Tottenham say, they are ready to listen to offers. Who wants to buy? Come sign them. We are ready. Uh, if you have the right money for these two players, we will take. All right, that is the size of the show this morning. I am Imam Refashion. We are sorry that uh, Isaac and Co. and Samuel uh, couldn't uh, continue on the program because of... Uh,